Boketov, Khabri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Do have breaking news coming out of Ukraine. Also be looking a little bit on things going on in Israel as well today uh, in, our, in our morning broadcast here. Murad Gazdiev, a friend of ours here on Twitter, uh, has posted uh, a couple of videos here. It's not just only that. We're going to be looking also at uh, Maria Zakharova and her morning statement this morning about Ukraine. The war there, Petro Poroshenko completely out of control there, bombing the civilian areas over in the Donetsk region. Uh, listen here to some of Murad's statements here. The neighborhood of Donetsk, where all those people have been evacuated from, there's no a window left intact here. It's this district, this neighborhood, that has borne the brunt of Ukrainian shelling over the last few days, and every few seconds we're hearing explosions. There's also small arms fire. Still, there are people left here without power, without water, without heating in this freezing weather, refusing to leave their homes. It's mainly because there's nowhere else to go. Uh, you have to keep in mind, Donetsk is uh, right there near the Russian border. Russia is the last place they can go. Uh, and a lot of these people are trying to hold on to their own place. Now, there's both sides of the fighting here are blaming the other, saying that, uh, that what is going on is that they're both firing grad rockets and tank shells from residential areas. But in both cases, the, the military is embedded in residential areas. There is no other place to go unless you're going to shoot at each other out in the cornfields. That's the only place there is. And uh, Pershinko is really, they're, they're trying to say that the grad launchers are being fired from residential areas. And at the same token, uh, we have watched news sources coming out of uh, Ukraine on Kiev side there, right out of their own city with the tanks running right through the streets of the civilians as well, and even sending their military into civilian buildings where civilians are living and using those as their launching place to shoot sniper rifles, etc. So it is tit for tat when it comes to residential, and it's kind of stupid to be saying that they're calling each other, uh, you know, using human shields. There's no other place for the war to be except on the front lines. Now, of course, both sides have claimed that they're evacuating civilians from those areas, but yet civilians are still staying in those areas. Here is another uh, uh, article as well on this young lady's site here, uh, Kuksha. 77. Uh, this is a, a film that she has uploaded herself as well of the fighting that is going on in there. Um, kind of break down that volume just a little bit there though, but in this one here, uh, the shelling had started on a, on a, uh, a, near an apartment building there in Donetsk. And uh, they're trying to get the people to come inside. They're having a hard time getting them to come inside quickly enough before the shelling starts. And, uh, and it's not long. Once they're in, uh, they still, the one guy keeps trying to film it. They have bombs and stuff dropping outside. And of course, that one comes in there. And uh, there is a girl that was actually hit uh, from, that, from that shell. Uh, you'll actually catch a glimpse of this uh, on there. And of course, her mother will begin screaming, uh, why did you go there? Why didn't you come in like I told you to? Uh, and she's hit. Uh, they call for emergency services. I don't know if it was a life-threatening hit that she took or not. Uh, but again, very serious situation. Uh, we're finding here also on Sputnik News there, Ukrainian military using weapon systems banned under terms of Minsk peace deal. And Donetsk uh, Russian Foreign Ministry has stated there, uh, Maria Zakharova has spoke on this, that this is really getting completely out of control. What's going on? And uh, she says, this is the shame of, of, of modern Europe, Zakharova said, reminding how Ukraine has been enjoying the protection of Western partners for years. On Friday, uh, three Kiev armed forces deliberately shelled residential areas of Donetsk, the region's largest city, with the use of multiple rocket launchers. The DPR Ministry of Emergencies Alexander uh, Krosbatsky told journalists that at least two people were killed and over a dozen were injured in Kiev forces attacked Donetsk from 
Ergon self-propelled multiple rocket launcher systems. The OSC confirmed that there were casualties, including in other uh, attacks as well. Children, two children have died in Donetsk uh, today as a result of the heavy shelling done on the civilian populations by Petro Poroshenko uh, and his military that he has brought in. Of course, also foreign battalions, not just one or two, but entire battalions of troops that are being brought in and we know that the U.S. military is there training them uh, uh, is, and, and things just again uh, going out of control. The OSC admits the UA Minsk violations are being broken. Uh, this is being uh, brought, brought out on stalkerzone.org on their article there. They translated the article themselves. Said Avika uh, observers recorded four T-64 tanks uh, which were driven forward by the uh, UAF on the roads for, for grad multiple launcher, launch rocket systems and also trucks with covered cargo compartments were noticed. In addition, it's behind the line of contact, but in the territories determined by the agreement, 41 stationary tanks and also two howitzers were found. 41 stationary tanks kind of reminds me of the video that we shared with you that we also noted 40 tanks back in July of last year that were moving, moved to the contact line there with Donetsk and they were preparing for uh, an attack on eastern Ukraine to take out the Russian separatists that are living there. So yes, it is actually happening and they are showing these things here. Uh, the, the different uh, elements that we're seeing here to show you that they are that they are actually uh, bringing these different tanks and things inside. But OSC, though, now is leaving this city here because the fighting is getting too intense uh, for them to stay there in that particular region there. Uh, another thing I wanted to share with you, too, Trump, uh, according to the New York Times, is reporting here that uh, uh, Washington say, states here, President Trump, after promising a radical break with the former policy of Barack Obama, is embracing some of key pillars of the former administration's strategy, including warning Israel to curb settlement construction, demanding that Russia withdraw from Crimea, and threatening Iran with sanctions for ballistic missile tests. In the most startling shift, the White House issued an unexpected statement appealing to the Israeli government not to expand the construction of Jewish settlements beyond their current borders in eastern Jerusalem. In the West Bank, such expansion, it said, may not be helpful in achieving the goal of peace. On Iran, the administration is preparing economic sanctions similar to those of the Obama administration. What's interesting, though, is the sudden shift on Israel and the fact that uh, President um, Trump is now saying for Israel to do building only on the east, on the, excuse me, the west side of Jerusalem where they are now, in behind the lines that have already been drawn. It seems that he is really being pressured by world uh, pressure, including that of the United Nations, uh, to go where Israel supposedly quote unquote belongs. And uh, so I think you're going to see a shift in the administration towards Israel on some of these key points here. And uh, that's sad in itself. Also, Crimea, and now that we see that uh, this information is out as well, Petro Poroshenko wasting no time to put the heat up on the eastern part of uh, Ukraine, on the Donetsk People's Republic there, trying to force Russia into this battle. So if Trump is going to demand that Russia leave Crimea, then we're no doubt going to see the, the, the friendly ties between Russia and the United States could end up dwindling instead of getting better. It's not looking good at all. And, um, but anyway, that's the best we can see right now on the things that we're watching here as things unfold. We will be bringing out a special broadcast on Amona, the eviction of the, uh, the citizens of Amona out of the settlement there that had lived there for 20 years. Uh, we have a good friend there that will be coming on with us uh, that was there the day before the evictions there that know the people there in Amona, and we'll be sharing some of the testimony of what Avi saw himself there in Israel about the eviction of Amona. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.